Hello and welcome to another video tutorial with me and this has been a while but I finally found the time to do this and I am working on a request from the SB118 forums and this request has been to talk about banners. So signature banners are there to show other people which ship you're on, what your main character is, maybe show a bit of your character by the quotes on the banner and so on. So let me first show you a little bit of the banners that we have already. Um, the Columbia is not active anymore but it's a good example of a simple banner that uses the signet of the ship which is this little part here. Then we have the stripes here that are in different colors depending on the department. We have rank, we have the name, we have a quote, character picture. The ship here is the actual Columbia on a space background that I made. So this is a rather simple one but effective. And a different style would be the Gorkon. At least that is how I think it's pronounced, I'm not sure, so correct me if I'm wrong, Quinn. <laughs> so this also um, shows the ship, but instead of the action star background, it goes a little bit out of the frame here for a little bit more dynamics. We have rank and name, we have a quote here, we have the ship and the and CC, um, I think it's the ID. <laughs> not sure how it's called in English. Um, and in this little corner here we have a bit of Klingon writing which says in honor of Chancellor Gorkon. Um, the next would be the Doyle banners which are based on the namesake Conan Arthur Doyle who wrote the favorite book I think of the CO of the ship so this is Sherlock Holmes, obviously. Um, next to a little bit of frame here, not to forget the name of the ship, name and rank of the character, a little bit of a quote here. And the ship itself again on a space background, which just reminds me I have to update your rank here, Celine, so I will do that. Um, and this is a banner that is different as you can see because at first it has no picture, second there is no spaceship or space background or anything. Um, this banner was made back when the constitution was reactivated under Shelter Farrenster who was the character before Celine Farrenster who is now CEO of the Doyle and I took it over because me and my crew just liked the banner design. This is based on the actual constitution of the United States, which was, I think, signed with quilts. <laughs> so we took the quilt design, have a bit dynamics here, um, following this curve here with the rank and the name, which when it's longer goes up here to the feather itself. We have the rank that follows this stem here in the middle, ship name and stuff here, the bottom always following lines and making this a bit more dynamic. So we want to make a new banner here for the sake of showing how we come up with ideas. Now since we don't have a new ship to make a banner for and we also don't have a make up ship. No, we actually do have a make made up ship. The USS Honeypot and Skyfire actually suggested to use that one again because we used it before. So we are going to make a honeypot banner. We used the honeypot itself on the badge, signet, whatever you may call it. So this time for the banner because we want to have a bit more of a rectangle kind of um, shape, we are going to use a honeycomb. So, we have I 
already prepared it so it also have a transparent background. The actual image doesn't have that so I used the mask layer here to make that possible and we duplicate that into the honeypot banner file I made here. So first let me save this and close it. Okay, now we see that this is too big for this banner but instead of making this bigger we are going to make the honeycomb smaller. The reason is that these 800 times 250 here is the maximum image size for the new forum. So we are going to make this smaller to fit in to this. I have to go a bit smaller here, uh, closer here. I'm going to, I'm using Alt key press down and my mouse wheel to make sure it doesn't go over the edge here. And at the top it's a bit too far away so we I click on this and use my arrow key up to use it to move it up a bit. And make it just a tad bigger. There, that looks fine. Now this is absolutely off center of course. What I'm doing for this is I'm making guides to see where the center is. And that is what I'm doing with view, new guide, first horizontal 50%. You don't have to use centimeter or pixels here, you can use 50% and it goes right into the middle which is really really nice. And then we make a new guide, vertical, 50% and now we see that here is the middle now I'm trying to move this here I could either use I'm not sure if the snapping works yes it w should work if I move it over here that at some point it just snaps but to make sure it really is in the middle I'm going to free transform and then I'm zooming in and see if this little mm, thing in the middle here is directly on the lines and it is. So this is the middle now and because we don't need the sides here we are going to crop this. So I'm using the crop tool, hold down alt and then I'm moving these sides closer. I use alt because that moves both sides to the same distance move it like this and confirm there we go now this is the size of our new honeypot banner it's a bit difficult to do anything in this distance so I'm going to get it closer and now let's see we have this nice honey dripping here which is a really lovely detail. This doesn't look anything like a spaceship banner but well the honeypot is an unusual spaceship <laughs> and um, it, I can show you it would be difficult to see proper writing. Wait a second that's too big. Let's do this too big. That might still be too big yeah. Use this honey pot. Let's make this smaller. Yeah, kind of like this. So, use this honey pot. Actually, the shift writing is always smaller somewhere in a corner, right? So, let's put it down here. So, <coughs> now it looks totally pixelated but if you go to actual pixels it's it's much better so um now you see the writing but for me I don't know how it's for your eyes but for my eyes the background is very distracting but we don't want to lose all the honeycombs here because it's part of the design so what we're going to do is we make a nice overlay solid color and we're going to do this by first making a new layer 
Let me first rename these here honeycomb and solid color. That will be easier for explanations. So we are going to make this affect only the honeycombs, not the whole image. And that is why we are going to use our clipping mask. We either hold down the Alt key and click between those here until you see this arrow with the nice box or right click on the solid color layer and create clipping mask. It's both the same, do whatever feels better for you. So what we're going to do is I have already prepared this color here which is basically the same color as between those little thingies which name I have forgotten, combs I guess, no combs. <laughs> Then we have a long click on the paint bucket to get the gradient tool. And we keep the um, foreground to transparent here. You hold somewhere here at the top, hold down shift, click and drag. And there we go. This is much better already, but I want to have a little bit more solid at the top. So I'm going in the middle here drag this and there we go this is a bit too much so going a bit up so I clicked on this here and move the key up easy as that <laughs> then we have this nice little cones here but we also have this which means that some of the color went onto the honey but it stopped here because we moved it up so I'm going to actually delete the new color from the honey down here I do this by making a new mask on the solid color here grab my brush use a black color make sure the spacing is down because we don't want to have these uh, bubbles in the line here, you want a smooth line. And then I am clicking here, hold shift and click the next part. That means we have a straight line masked out. Again I click here, hold shift and do this. Click, shift, there, shift, click, shift, click. I use this shift trick all the time to paint or mask straight lines because I can't paint for my life even if it looks different. With all the graphics I make. But yeah, I can manipulate stuff and stuff, stuff like that but I really can't paint at all. Not even a straight line. So I use tricks like this which Photoshop is gladly enabling. First the straight lines here then the rest. Just a moment more. So we have nice yellow honey. And this shift click straight line thing you can do for erasing, painting, masking everything you like as long as you use a brush <laughs> okay so we have this let me see if any other blending layer would look nice with that we can either do this no 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 blending layers are a mysterium to me there are a couple that I understand how they work others I really don't. So what I'm going to do is lowering the opacity just a bit so we have it not fully solid but still solid enough to be able to read the writing well. So now we have to think do we put a picture in this or not? Now there are a couple of ideas that we can use to actually put a picture in that by following these nice lines here for example or we just keep it as it is. Now um, 
Let me try to use a picture with that. So first I have to grab a picture. Of course I didn't prepare that, because why would I do that? Um, <laughs> let me go into my image chain avatar images. Let me take a grab any picture that I can find here. Oh, take me one of mine. That's okay. Now this is one of my PNPs, so Mr. Emo's Ebony, and we are preparing this for a picture. What we want to do is follow these nice honeycombs here to go with the theme. So I am going to make a shape along these lines here. First I'm going to do is make this a new clipping mask so I can paint over here and nobody cares. No, I don't actually. I can't do that. Um or maybe I can actually I can, yes. This is how I work. I change my mind all the time. So first I'm going to deactivate the solid color so I can see those lines better. Then I'm going in with the what's it called polygonal lasso tool and follow kind of the middle between those combs here to make sure that these horizontal lines are straight and I'm holding it down shift again now this is going a bit over here so that's fine we can fix that in a moment following this and this and then we can bring it together here until you see this nice lasso with the circle and that means we have it. So we um, filled this with black for now. We, will, we won't see that anyway later. So and then we go to our honeycomb layer mask hold down control and click on the mask that way the whole mask here is selected then we click again on this layer 2 I call this picture base and press delete no, the other way around, sorry first let me <sighs> that was wrong and undo doesn't work right now. Wait a second here. There. We invert that first. So you can see the delete has now deleted everything in here. We don't want that. We want to get rid of anything over the line here. So we go to select inverse and then cross enter, um, delete, I mean. And then we have this nice base here. Now we take the Elmo picture with Control um, A for select all, Control C for copy, and bring this in here with Control V, and then we make a clipping mask of Elmo with a picture base, and bring this up here and make this a bit smaller with Control T for free transform. Alt and Shift and dragging this down. So this is an example of how we can actually implement a picture in this unusual shape. And what I'm doing now is I'm going to the picture base, blending options and stroke inside for two pixels with an opacity of there. 50 is okay, I think. That way we have a nice frame around it. That's a possibility. We can also leave the picture out, but I actually like this a bit. Um, of course it cuts into the character a little bit, but the things we do to go with the flow. <laughs> um, so since we use this picture, we are going to use his name and everything as well. So first thing we do is now 
the rank and the name. Now we can decide if we want to use um, a graphic for the rank or the writing. In this case I want to do the writing because the pin or pip, how you call them, graphic would be not really fitting to the rest of the design. So first I'm going to disable the guides here, clear guides. I could also go just to, um, what was it, extras here and disable that, then they would still be there to be used later but not show up now, but I'm going to do this because I don't need them anymore. The new center would be this part here. So this is something I have to eyeball. Here is the new edge. And now we have to find the middle between these, but since we have this nice geometric shape here, it's kind of in the middle of this comb. There. So I'm going to click here for the writing, bringing down the sides a bit more because it shouldn't be the... actually, I should bring down the honeypot a bit more, so... This is four and sign a mouse habanay and I have to make this still smaller because I have started so small this is kind of tricky so now we go into the honey pot and bring this down more there. Actually let me bring this down to this corner maybe? No. This is okay because otherwise we have these... Oh, this is a... I forgot how the letter is called in English, so whatever. This little trilly thingy here <laughs> would go over the edge and that would look stupid. Um, is it the Y? No, the Y is something else. Y. <laughs> if so, it's in German. So yeah, Anson Amos Habany. Now if we want to put the position into that as well, we can go like Science Officer. But um, actually what we can do is instead we go to the picture base stroke line here and make this in blue sorry make this there blue or teal depending on what your ship uses for science then bring up the opacity and the stroke one so we have the department color as the edge of the picture. Now in other col colors you might see it even better. For example, make it red or make it nice gold for ops and so on or green for the marines or whatever. So let me make this teal. Then we don't have to put in the department in the writing and can focus on the nice stuff. What would Amo say actually? Um, he does say a lot, but nobody understands him. So let's say. Um, I the moment would be something that he actually says. But it doesn't really say anything about the character, I just can't come up anything. So you can put in the quote here as well. Let me see how it looks in the actual size here. Yep. Um, I might have to make the name a bit bigger. And this is trial and error, really. There is no really, um, no real, what do you say, a formula or anything. So just do whatever feels weird, um, feels good, not feels weird, unless you want weird. I'm over here. Wait a 
one second. So this is how it looks with the two row quote. Which you can do. Um what else you can do is for example include your writer ID, which in this case um I have to look up which is mine. You're seeing lots of stuff here, all my files for writing. I'm not always that organized <laughs> actually. So we can put in... I don't think I've ever seen a banner with the writer ID inside, so this is totally made up now. Maybe someone wants to do that, so I'm showing it anyway. So if Amos Ebony would be my primary character, I would possibly do something like this. Um, make this a bit smaller. 1.5 maybe. Yeah, that's better. And this is how we come up with the banner. So this is not perfect, of course. Um, we could make this possibly much better, for example, with going to the honeycomb. And make a little drop shadow. That's too big. Something like this. A bit less opacity, just to give it a bit more depth. Maybe even an not inner glow, no, an inner shadow from the top, but in smaller as well. Less capacity just for the depth part which looks really nice and then there we go turn on the solid color again because as I said I don't know how it's for you for me the background is a bit distracting from the writing that makes it harder to read it's not that hard because of black on yellow isn't that bad but this looks better for me personally with a little bit less opacity. There we go. Now if you want to have the writing in a different color, of course you can do that as well. You might even do the writing in the department colors. So that's your choice if you want to do that, if it still reads well. Which might not be too bad here. You can also make it something like the background color, but in darker to go with the theme. You can use a different writing of course. I guess just use one that is called Honey Script to fit this theme. But let me get a bit closer here. You can use something that is more tricky. No, that's Hunger Games. Um for example here Star Trek stuff use this here, like Star Avenue, which is too big, or the usual one that I use that is um, Lithos Pro, this one here, but again that's too big, we would have to make it much smaller. So I'm staying with my honey script for now. <laughs> um, make the writing a bit bigger, not too big. This is okay, move it a bit down, a bit away from the edge. So yeah, this is what you can do. This is how I come up with the ideas, I just use something from the ship. Now if you want to say something a bit more tracky, let me first save this here. Yes, 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 save everything. Let me new. 800 by 250. So, if we want to do something a bit more tracky based on the honeypot, for example, what kind of ship is the honeypot? Because it's my ship, possibly a galaxy class. This window is really big here. Um, let me see if I can find the galaxy class graphics here. I don't think so. Maybe it's, no, not the background, maybe it's in my banner template somewhere. 
that neither hmm galaxy class is here but it's from the back yeah that is absolutely a bust let me take just um one picture from another banner that I worked on this banner wasn't taken so I'm hoping that this is okay to be used I'm taking this ship which is actually the Darwin since they have a banner let me just use this for testing purposes here duplicate layer into the untitled graphic putting this in we need to make this much smaller so control T for free transform zooming out a bit holding down shift to keep the constraints And if this lets me, come on, it's a bit slow right now, there we go, it's a bit, oh yeah, this is okay, for now, <laughs> so we can use this for the side here, for example, pretending that this ship is flying out into space. Then the first thing I would do personally is to make a, a rectangle, like a box to use with this for the whole character information and stuff. It doesn't mean that this will stay a rectangle, but it's a base. So I'm filling this with black as a base. My computer is slowing down right now, which isn't nice of them. So I'll make sure that the black isn't shown in these transparent sphere down here or up here. That is why I'm moving this out. There we go. And because this looks a bit weird here, I'm actually going to move this down to meet this edge there here and then take down the bottom there we go that also means I'm going to make a mask and delete this part up here and here and also here This might look interesting in the end, it might be total bust as well, then we can just disable the mask layer here. This is just what I'm testing first, if it looks okay with the rest later. Now I am using this base here as a base of course, make a new layer for the department color making this a clipping mask. Again, Alt and click between the layers here. And I am going to make the first here. I'm using this orangey yellow here just to make an op spanner now. Make a new copy of that and bring it to the bottom. and actually changed my mind taking this one turning it around with control and T and then using this oh, wait a second control T holding down shift and using uh, this rotation arrows here to rotate it around in little steps until it's 90% and then I'm going to use this to the side here just for a little thin line and bring this a bit down there I don't know if I like this 
and this is what happens with everything banner or picture like it's a lot of trial and error so we are going to need a star background I made a couple so I'm going to use those um, let me grab this one because it's blue and see how that works I assume by now that you know how to copy paste but if not control A for select everything select all then control C for copy in the new file control V for pasting it and I don't like how these look together so I'm going to delete that again um, as soon as this lets me there let me grab another one actually let me leave this one Your stars actually are nice, but let me test another one. These are all backgrounds that I made for stuff like this and other stuff. This is nicer. Okay, let's take this for now. Close the other headers. Then because the Darwin already has a banner, we take this right in down here. And I use Lithos Pro now to make it a bit more Star Trek y or sci fi or whatever. <coughs> there, Lithos Pro. and bring this down I forgot the how much not how much uh, what the NCC is of it but I'm just using a random number here so this would be a base that we could work on Make this a little bit smaller still. That's too small. There, that's better. And going to use 1.5. This, of course, doesn't work because I have put these into the clip layer under the department so let's bring them up without being clipped there we go this could be Captain Reynolds for example if he were ops or security or engineering or something and now we go in put the quote here there moving this around to make it work kind of making it a bit smaller to fit with the rest so this could be a base banner now this is very empty here unless someone has a really really long name you can actually fill this and I'm going to fill this with um, some <coughs> ranks RP stuff uh, must be image team ranks and no that's the wrong ones what I am using is these Navy gold officer and uh, these here are on transparent backgrounds let's come Commander 3, also Captain is 4, so I'm taking these. 
bring them in here, move them up here, and with Control T, holding Shift, dragging, uh, dragging them down, make them a bit smaller, and move them here. So this isn't too shabby. It's a bit broad because it's very empty. So I'm going to first bring this a bit more here. The base is going to be a bit more deleted here, which is totally fine. And I'm going up here, bring the rings a bit over, tutorial a bit there, um, quote, and you can make it smaller or bigger or anything. This would be the actual size. And for the same reasons we did this before, for a bit depth, I'm going to make a drop shadow there. And a drop shadow there. And crop this a bit down because we don't use the full size of the image. So this could be a base banner for a ship that you're flying. You can, of course, if you don't like the cutting... Oops, uh, I'm sorry about that. There, if you don't like the cutting here, you can just keep it square and Again with Control T, go to the middle thingy and pull it out here. There. Maybe you even want to put the ranks on this side then. So whatever floats your boat. <laughs> now this has nothing to do with Darwin. So this is just a base banner if you don't have a particular idea. The actual Darwin banner has a really, really great design, actually, which has a lot to do with the Darwin. Let me see if I can find that for you. One second. And there I found it for you. So this is the actual Darwin banner. As you can see, it has to do with the Darwin here. Um, as you also can see, it isn't really cut a, a transparent background, which is fine to you. It is norm. It is cut off here to have this dynamic name and position thing here. The Darwin also has this theme of like if they are in a TV show with starring and Star Trek Darwin like being a TV show which is really great. The quote is down here to not be in the picture. So as you can see there are so many different ways you can make a banner make it yourself see how it flows with you I'll bring in your ideas, play around with it, so go nuts, basically. <laughs> um, there is no formula for a banner. There is no, this is how you do it, this is how you don't do it. You just try out things and see if the CO of the ship likes it. That's basically everything. <laughs> so you go on, try to find your ideas, make it your own, play around with it, um, if you don't like it, scratch it and start anew. That's what I do. So not every idea that I have lands actually on the table of someone. Many, many ideas just get deleted because I hate them myself. <laughs> or get changed from the first sketch to the final version because the person I made it for doesn't like it. it. Happens all the time. So don't be discouraged if it doesn't work right away. Just keep on doing it. And in the end, you will be really, really happy and proud of yourself that you made something that great. So I hope to find the time to make a new tutorial very, very soon. And until then, I say goodbye and stay creative. Bye bye.